All right, Psalms 46. I know you're very familiar with this passage of Scripture. But we're going to talk this morning in verse number 10. Simply, these two words, be still. That ain't easy to do. Lord have mercy. Listen, there's, there's times when... I know y'all think I come in here and give a lesson for y'all every week. I know you think that. But it don't work that way. God cleans my clock way before I get in here on Sunday morning, I'm here to tell you. And 90% of the time, now sometimes God does give me a, a, a lesson, you know, that's uh, dealing with something specific, but most of the time, God's dealing with my wretched heart <laughs> and my problem about getting in God's way so many times. But very familiar, and I, I, I sent it out uh, and I'll tell you another request we can remember is the uh, the Thailand, the land over there for the children's home. Uh, it works a little bit. I'm going to just take just a minute to share this this morning because I think it would be good for you to pray. Uh, things just work different in Thailand than they do here. Here we put a contract on some land. We go to the close and we pay for the land. It's a done deal. It don't work that way in Thailand. Thailand, the government owns all the land. Now, they're not a communist country, but they do have provinces, and a certain province and, and uh, place that this is in, the home, the, the missionary that was there, Mr. Butch, um, had leased lease land. So at least seven acres of land, and long story short, that land's involved in some families, and each time we get close to closing out the property, in our terminology of closing out, uh, one of the siblings keep coming back wanting more money, more money, more money, more money. So that's simply, long story short, where we at over there with the home. It's close, but uh, I had uh, Butch, or not Butch, Butch is going to heaven, but uh, Brother Tim and Maureen, the missionaries that's over there, uh, taking over the thing. They're about wore out. I mean, they're up in their 60s and. Uh, they've been going for two years dealing with this thing and taking groups over there. And, uh, just to, and by the way, a few months ago, well, not a few months ago, well, I guess it ain't been about a year ago, not long after we got back, that when that bomb went off over there, I know y'all remember the bombing that took place in, in Bangkok just a few weeks, really, after we got back. And uh, the government come in and said, you got three days to leave the country. Now imagine that taking place here. Imagine coming to your place, you've been 35 years, the government says you got three days to leave the country. You better get some stuff together quick because you're leaving. Well, they had to be gone for 45 days, so now they're back, and they're back in it uh, with the churches and all that going on. But you need to remember uh, that situation, if you will, and remember them. They've been there 35 years, and uh, uh, you know, I know we had a challenge one time to to send letters to missionaries. I don't know if y'all remember him when he spoke here when we had the veterans thing that night. Uh, but his wife had had two female U.S. visitors in 35 years. We forget about the missionaries. We talk, we support, we, we, we have a longing for that, and I know it's a calling, and everybody's got the thing to do, but I'm here to tell you, there's so much ministry that's available for you and I. That would be a, a great one, but he texted an email last Sunday, which is Monday over there now. <laughs> hey, well, it's 10 to 10 Monday morning, but he emailed one was in church last week and just a little bit discouraged, you know, with what's going on and, and physically and all that. And this scripture is what come to mind. And I, I said, brother, I'm not trying to be spiritual but encouraging here. You know, a lot of times you'll, you'll send, somebody will send you a text or an email or something, and uh, you know, and you come back with a scripture, and sometimes they think, well, you're just trying to be spiritual, you know. Don't work that way. The scripture brings hope. The scripture brings comfort. That's right. And this is what I sent back, and I said, brother, I'm not trying to be spiritual, just encouragement. Be still, and know that I'm God. And and God started cleaning my clock. All right? <laughs> Said, uh, Mr. Pike, it's about time for you to be still a little bit. 
you go and you're trying to figure out how you're going to do all these things and how you're going to make this happen, how you're going to get that job done, how you're going to get paid for this. And how you... Listen, we need to be still from the pulpit to the pew <coughs> and let God be God. And, and so remember him, remember that, that missionary couple, and there's others. I mean, there's so many letters that you could read them from time to time. Uh, but remember these folks. But let's, let's look at this this morning. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So let's dissect this right here on the lesson this morning of being still. First of all, it means to sink or to relax. To sink down. To let drop. And a pipe translation here would be release your grip. <laughs> That's my translation of it. Release your grip. Amen. We want it. We want a hold of it. Especially guys. Listen, I'm going to talk to you a little bit in here, man. We want to fix it. We want to take care of it. We want to put our hands on it and just fix it. Sometimes we won't put our hands on it and wring some necks. <laughs> all right? But that don't work all the time either. But we have problems and we want to fix it. The scripture says here, be still. That is some affirmative that we need to do. We need to say amen and agree with that. Be still and know. So release that grip. That means to withdraw, to abandon. To show oneself slack. Man, that's hard for us to do. Hard for us to get to a point where we can be still before Almighty God and release our grip and say, God, you are the only one that can fix this problem. And 95% of the time, I don't even know how you can throw a number on it, but most of the time, we didn't ask for anything that comes in our life. We just didn't ask for it. I remember I've been in some situations and uh, places, uh, especially being a deacon and other other things like that. That ain't what I signed up for. <laughs> you ever been in a situation? You say, you know what? I just really ain't what I signed up for. Well, you didn't sign up. God signed you up. He enlisted you. You are a soldier in his army. He has chosen you to be that soldier. Well, we got to find ourselves in those times to be still. Release all authority over the problem. We didn't ask for it most of the time. I don't know a person in the world that got up and said, Lord, I just, I believe I want cancer. It don't happen. I don't think a person in the world got up and said, Lord, I just, I wish you would inflict my body with pain today. <laughs> No, we ain't going to do nothing like that. Lord, I wish you'd just let me be so tight financially that I don't even know nothing. No, we don't ask for that stuff. Now, we can make decisions and get into some predicaments and be in those kind of places, but we need to realize that whatever we're going through, God knows what we're going through. We need to be still. That's hard for us to do, to show ourselves slack. In other words, we need to somehow come to the place in our lives to simply abandon our control on whatever trouble or trial we find ourselves in today. Now, I started digging through this, and uh, I, I could cut the Hebrew on. You know, I showed you all that before. But the be still here is very interesting. I, I started digging through and looking at that. You say, well, you shouldn't have to. That's simple. Be still. That means get out of the way. Well, there's a lot to the Word of God. If you want to study and dig, you need to do these kind of things. You need to pull up the Hebrew. And if you don't have an app or something, or something on your computer, or your tablet, or your phone, or whatever, then get out your big old concordance that's about that thick. <laughs> that's laying that collecting dust, you know? Pull it out. You'll find it. Be still. I started looking it up. And, and it's amazing what you will find when you start doing these things. Well, I, I looked it up, and the word for uh, the Hebrew phrase there, be still, the word for that is Rapha. And I'm going to say that one more time. Rapha. 
And I'm sure the Holy Spirit right now is bringing something to some of y'all's mind about Rapha. Just think about it for just a moment. That's from the Hebrew word Rapha being said, if you look in the Hebrew, it's number 7503, which originates from 7495. You say, what does that got to do with anything? Well, that word Rapha means to heal. Very interesting, ain't it? We look at it as we still get out of the way, and it really means to heal. God can heal a situation. God can do that if we get out of the way. And so it means to heal. It means to make helpful the healing of God. And it also means a healing of individual stresses. <laughs> I told you I'm talking to myself this morning. Y'all get in on it if you want to. I hope the Lord will speak to you in some way through this. But it's simple this morning. But... It's a healing of individual stresses. I can't tell you what how good it feels to when you carry a burden and you're carrying and you're carrying and you're carrying. Uh, I, I'm just going to give you a, a, an illustration of all I know to really do. I've not been on a, a hunting trip where there hadn't been some kind of friction in the home before I left. I was just something about it. My wife don't like to be left at home be gone for a week doing whatever I do. I mean, they, there's some kind of friction been there. And I remember early on, it, it gets better as you get older, amen. Sometimes you get on out of the house, amen. Go somewhere. <laughs> amen. You get a few decades under your marriage, you're like, yeah, it's about time you can go. I'm going to buy you a trip somewhere. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I can remember those times of having that, that friction. And all the way up until, I mean, you don't, you don't, you know you need to go, you know you don't pay for it, so you go and you know, it's kind of on it and all that. And I remember being on an airplane and and all of a sudden, you know, been praying, Lord, you know, she's your child. I don't get too personal this morning, but, you know, she's your child. She's got, I can't do nothing about it. I can't do nothing about it. And I can remember being on an airplane and that burden just lift off. And you know then, God's done took care of it. Yep. God's done yep. working yep. on that. Yep. Well, we have problems like that in any area of our life. I mean, we, it's nothing more heartbreaking than sitting there seeing a, a little child sick. And knowing you can't do nothing about it. And it hurts, and you burden, and you agonize, and you, you pray, and you seek. And then all of a sudden, God just lifts that burden. Mm -hmm. I got it. And that's the only thing he can do. Well, it's a healing. It's a releasing of stress. It means to mend up by stitching, to cure, to cause, to heal. All that in that be still phrase there. And our God, this is one I was hoping you would think about, our God is Jehovah Rapha, mm -hmm. the God that healeth. I remember praying for uh, Mother last night. And this come out, Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth. It's just something that's meant in. And that you need to hide that kind of word in your heart. Because you'll find if you're praying in the Holy Spirit, He will bring up His word. Amen. He's the author of it. And so, Jehovah Rapha. Rapha is what the word be still comes from. And so we know Jehovah Rapha is the God that healeth. If we could ever learn to let go and let God be God, that's hard to do. Hey, I, 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 you know, it's a wonderful song. I can't even think. Of, it is "Let God Be God," I think. But uh, I, may, I know you familiar with it, I'm sure. But you know, it talks about what if you know what if God doesn't heal? What if about the child that's sick and, and stuff like that? And it's like. The mama looks at the dad and says, just let God be God. That's hard to do. Mm -hmm. That comes mm -hmm. yeah. very difficult to do. And it, it's not going to come as soon as a trial comes. Does that make sense? Yes. Getting to this point of being still, it's not the first thing we're going to do when we're hit with a trial. Uh -huh. It's not going to happen. If you're that way, praise God. You are more of a Christian than I'll ever be. Amen. I'm not there, 
But I pray that I will be humble enough to get there and have enough wisdom to get there. That's the importance of staying right. That's the importance of staying in Sunday school and staying in church and staying in the Word, staying under the Word. You know, we can come to a point in our life where our clay is so hard that we don't feel the hand of God shaping us and molding us and, and God has to chip away a lot of times. But wouldn't it be nice if we could just ever come to a point in our life Notice the we's and the hours I'm using here, okay? That we could come to a point in our life where we just stay moldable, where the hand of God can just mold us and shape us. Hey, so easy, you, you watch that clay when it's on that wheel. Man, it's wet, it's nasty, it's, you know, it's spinning, and that old potter can just mold it and move it and shape it. Different story when it's hard. Amen. Problem is, we get to the point where it's hard, so when we get to a trial, the first thing we're not going to do is to be able to be still. We don't think about it. I, listen, I get phone calls, and when I get phone calls of a problem, the last thing I come to my mind is, be still. Don't. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just where I'm at, and it ain't there. But that's, it needs to be what we do. So. If we need to realize that God is a God that healeth, and that's what that means, be still. If we could ever learn to let go and let God be God, then and only then will healing and deliverance come to our situation. Now watch this, the next part. And know. Well, this lines up to learn to know. So let me say this, that this comes with time. This comes with wisdom. I wish this could be taught and learned like 2 plus 2 is 4, but it don't work that way. <laughs> be still and know. That's different when you're doing a mathematical problem. All right? I know if I cut a set of stringers out on a 7 and a half rise and a 10 and a half inch run, I know that's a 35 degree angle. I ain't even got a... I've done it so much, I know that. But... That don't mean that I didn't learn that by time and doing it repetitive and repetitive. So if we're going to be still and let God heal us in our situation, we got to know that He is God, and that's going to come with time. That doesn't, so don't get frustrated if you start trying to practice this scripture, and all of a sudden it, it's like, the burden ain't there, the burden ain't gone, and you're still going through with it. Be still and know that comes with time. The longer, the more God moves in our lives, the longer He brings us through things, the more we can know that He'll do it again and again. So be still, be healed, and know that means to learn to know. If we're going to learn something, we've got to put it into practice. We've got to go to school. <laughs> We don't like school. I, I, I didn't like school. I don't like school of life. To be honest with you. I don't like it when I wish God would teach me in other ways. Like 2 plus 2 is 4. Be that easy. But it don't work that way. Alright. We got to learn. and We got to know that I am God. I am the supreme God. I am the chief ruler. I am the chief judge. I am that I am. The only reason there is, is because I am. I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Those few phrases right there, the first part of that verse is tremendous. It's powerful. And I'm telling you, sometimes that's all we can do. Sometimes that's all a bit of encouragement that we can bring out. Is be still and know that I am God. He said, I will be exalted. God said, don't worry, child. I've got you in my control. I will be exalted. And I will be exalted through you in this world. Now, it's amazing to me that God exalts himself through people. I don't see where God can use me in any way to bring exaltation to him. Uh, but I, I, sometimes the victories come. And yes, He is going. Every time God delivers you and I through anything, 
that brings exaltation to him. So he said, I will be lifted up. I will exalt through you in this world, through my power, through my workings. Will I be lifted up to the world, to that lost world? I will be exalted every time I bring a healing. Listen, when we can't bring a healing, then we can't. All we can do is pray and believe and beg and do what we're supposed to do. When that prayer chain gets off and your phone goes off, hello, this is Faith Baptist Church calling. Don't answer that thing when you see it with some kind of, oh, here we go. Now sometimes, you know, a little toe stumping and stuff is ridiculous, but you got to weed through that. Uh, you're going to get it sometimes. <laughs> Most of the time, folks are going to call that because they need you to intercede for them. Mm -hmm. that's right, that's right. And always remember, when that time, that thing is flipped, there's two sides of every corner. Right. They will come a day when you need yes. to call that number. Right. Yep. That's right. You'll need the church to pray for you. Mm -hmm. So you need to pray for the church and pray for the individual. But he said, every time I bring healing, Every time uh, I bring deliverance, every time I meet a need in one of my children's life, every time I make a way when there is no way, every time God does that, He is exalted. Know where He will. If if you got people on the job, or you got people in your line of work that you come in contact with, or people in your family, hey, that was, you talking about a blessing yesterday? They give an invitation. At the, family, at the wedding. Glory to God. Man, I was back here about to shout. <laughs> now, they may not, I ain't never heard of it. That's awesome. Because you know what? I guarantee you, there were some folks there that didn't know the Lord. Yep. They come mm -hmm. into it. And God sat down on that service, and I felt the conviction of the Holy Ghost. I felt His power, His presence, just as much as in an in a invitation given in the church. Now, I don't know that a hand went up. I didn't hear Brother Dennis say. But I do know this. God can take that and God can move in a life right there on those grounds. Mm -hmm. And nobody ever know. And God can take it and bring glory to himself. So every time you see that God touches you or God delivers you or God brings you through a situation, there's lost people that's looking. And sometimes God's going to do it just to show them. But to bless you. <laughs> I don't understand why he does it, but he does. God will bring through. We must be about praying. Now he goes on to say, I will be exalted among the heathen. Don't worry, God's going to bring glory to his name. He said, I will be exalted in the earth. This world has lost sight of God. This world don't think nothing of God. We've got some movements in this world that's far from the Lord. The Muslim and the Quran and all these crazy things are far from God. Yeah, they'll include Jesus Christ in as a part of history and blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. They don't claim him for who he is. So this world, and they far outweigh our population, by the way. I don't know if I, I signed up for a kid and a couple. I call them kid. He's 20s. <laughs> he is a kid. Amen. But that couple that's going to, to China, uh, they email me every week on different provinces. And it's amazing, man, those provinces in China. 50 million, 70 million, 60 million, 30 million. And I'm like, it, it's a little bitty, you know, yeah. dropping a bucket on a little map. I'm like, man, we ain't that populated. We're not. Look at the population of America. Look at the population of China. Mm -hmm. I mean, they in the billions. We in the 300 and 400 millions. Well, it is just come to show you, God is going to work. He will be exalted in the earth, and God's going to put people where they need to be. Then, verse 11, I think, will be a great comfort to us. The Lord of hosts is with us. As I mentioned last week, we got to realize whatever we're going through, we're not alone. God is there with us. And people, he's going to have people there with us. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And the whole chapter starts out by that, that 
God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. See, tying all that in to God says for you and I to be still. Lord, would you help us to do just that? God, to be still and know that you're God. Would you minister to our hearts like only you can do? Touch the situations that's going on in our family's lives. God, you know it. Well, you know exactly where we at and what we stand in need of. You're in control. You're the author and the finisher of our faith. We didn't do nothing to start it. God, you started it. And you're going to complete it. And that's who you are. We praise you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.